Morning guys, morning. Today I want to give you the final conclusion of the Venom Gaia Elemental Deadeye character. I started the character in Solo Cellfound and transitioned after beating Awakened Age Cyrus. In the background we will see the character beating all kinds of endgame content with different points of gear. So not everything is with the gear we see right now. Let's go over the different games I am using. We use a model call for defense, ancestral protector for like more boss DPS, blood rage uh, for frenzy charges and damage, uh, well not for frenzy charges but for attack speed at this point only. We use second wind and dash for some mobility and getting rid of divines. We are used Rolling Blades with faster attacks, Fortify and Blood Magic to get around quickly and without losing Divines. We use Wrath, Herald of Ice, Precision and Lighten, and Arcanist Brand, Faster Casting, Sniper's Mark and Wave of Conviction. In our main damage setup we use Venom Gaia, Added Lightning, Inspiration, Nightblade, Fog and Trinity. The different qualities and the Awakened games help us a lot, but are not mandatory to start with. We have an elemental damage with attacks for the swap Awakened Fork, for stuff like Awakened 9 Cyrus, and we've got an Awakened Elemental Focus for Trinity when we feel like we don't get our Trinity stacks. Let's take a look at the current point of gear. We're using a Feral's Fool for Aspect That was not fair. <laughs> A claw that is focused more around cold a claw, and a claw that is more focused around lightning. We need two different claws to have like Trinity proc more often and reliably in boss fights. For the gloves we mostly use damage mods. We want accuracy, attack speed, culling strike, intimidate and damage while leeching as well as life. The helmet wants accuracy, crit multiplier, well, physical damage taken from hits taken as lightning, as fire damage, whatever, as some defense, a uh, life mod that I still have to increase, damage penetration together with elemental damage, it's an like elevated mod, and we've got the nearby enemies take 9% increase elemental damage taken from the shaper, it's elevated as well. Then we've got boots to fix resistances, give a lot of life and give us cannot be frozen. For the rings we've got one very fat resistance ring with some cool damage and life, and a resistance ring with a lot of lightning damage and life. For the amulet we want well a lot of damage aspect of the cat and well, anointing arcane blows or throat seeker well, and some life. For the belts we mostly want damage and strength because this can then be replaced by a headhunter without any problem. The suffixes cannot be changed currently is there to like increase the life mod still and then divine it perfectly and after that I will put 20% increased damage on that of the suffixes cannot be changed. For the flasks we've got a life flask with remove bleeding, we've got a wise oak, a serious promise, bottled faith and the diamond flask with immune to curse. We could take out the diamond flask because we are nearly at crit cap while we have the bottled faith up but yeah that's something I didn't decide on yet. You could as well put in paper flask for more projectiles but you don't really need it and you would have to get rid of wise oak or get plus 50 lightning resistance. Let's take a look at the skill tree. For the ascendancy we want gale force, ricochet, endless munitions and focal point. You could as well go for far shot it would deal more damage when you stay far away but the whirling blade mechanic to throw out blades is a lot weaker with Fasha. For our keystones, go for Wind Dancer, Point Blank when we don't use Farshot, Acrobatics Keystones, and Nature's Patience. Nature's Patience gives us these grasping veins that slow our movement speed and they decay when we are moving, but when we only are stationary or use Wedding Blades, these stay and grant us 20% um, chance to deal double damage and 10% less damage taken. This is very huge for boss fights. For cluster jewels we use a large uh, cluster jewel with dagger attacks. This is important in the current endgame because we want the disease vector node 
which says enemies poisoned by you cannot regenerate life. Random Gaia has a small po portion of chaos damage, which is enough to poison the enemy because we have a 40% chance to poison as base. This means that the Maven, for example, cannot heal enemies, which is great currently. The other nodes are just damage like accuracy and damage by Lichi. And we've got a medium cluster with critical strike and increased damage. With our current critical strike chance, we might want to replace this, but yeah, it didn't go through calculations. For our jewels, we've got an intuitive leap, which just saves us some skill points here. We've got a watcher's eye, currently with increased attack speed while affected by precision and increased critical strike chance while affected by wrath. I didn't even know I had a Double, I thought I just had a tax speed with precision, but nice, I guess. Um, and then we've got Corrupted Blood cannot be inflicted on you. This is nice. We do have uh, Immune to Bleed, but this saves you every now and then. And pretty good jewel. You always want to have in pretty much any build. For the Pantheon, we take Soul of the Brine King with Stun and Block Recovery and reduce the effect of Chill because we don't have an Immune to Chill Flask, but are Immune to Freeze. And we want to use Soul of Aberrath to not care about Burning Ground and have some... Well, less ignite duration and stuff like that. This is helpful, not mandatory though. So the final upgrades I want to make with this build is rerolling the belt, get some better mods on this vermilion ring, upgrading the life, and finally get a headhunter. We are quite close to the headhunter, and well, we'll most likely get it tomorrow, but we will see. Yes. In the end, I wanted to give a quick overview of how I farmed the currency to get all of this. So, the areas I've played are Howard Hamlet, Baldur's Rest, and, well, we've got the Uncharted Dreams, obviously. So, first of all, the Uncharted Dreams, I like this setup the best because it gives a lot of master missions and favors harvest. We did a lot of harvest, especially in Howard Hamlet, and yeah, this sells very well. I sold about 50 crafts uh, overall for about 50 to 70x in total. Then we've got June here and I will explain why in a moment. We farm Valdos Rest as well, which gives like Harbingers, which is very good currency because of Exalted uh, Shards and the Ancient Orb Shards, I always forget how these are called. And then we've got June. I did play a lot of June, that's why I don't have June missions. For June, it is very important to have a very, very good board. I will not explain this in total. I will just say I've got a lot of pure Chayula Breach Stones, which sell very, very well. And then we've made some money with well, Cyrus every now. So that is how I pretty much got all my money for this character. For the Watchstones, I don't have a specific setup. I've got some increased chance to be June and some, well, better crafts for Harvest and stuff like that. I've got some... Well, increased chance to be Zana, and yeah, nothing too special here. Well, a uh, path of building for this character will be in the description, as well as a poe.ninja link. And yeah, I will just say thanks for watching, and see you the next time. First up. Deadly oh. missed the curse in the... It was a good phase. Quick and dirty. <gasps> the void is the most dangerous. My mana is gone. Nice, nice. Great phases. <clears throat> we get to one shot. Let's hear. First DPS. Yeah, that was good DPS. That's how I like it. Curse. From the back. The wipes the teleport? No. Was I freezed? I'm not sure. I think I was free. But I've used my freeze flask. At least didn't see it all. Ah, just cult him. Yeah, that was easy. That's my freeze flask. 
Diamond. Might have been down there. I don't know. My teleport was unlucky, but overall fine. If I had Kull on my gloves already, 